welcome to another episode of Cemetery Strolls. Today, we're down on the south side of the island, down at Bonchurch, and we're visiting St Boniface Bonchurch. The old lights, the gates, the leash on the gates. That's a bit of road. It's a high. It's in just underneath like the cliffs. We come up to these. Beautiful. I think we're looking at eleventh century. Cottage over there with a nice clock. Just a small graveyard, but It's well worth a visit. Go inside. Oh, lovely uh, craftsmanship on the hinges. Let's see. Beautiful windows and the ceiling. And down by the altar. Looks like that's in that. You're not gonna get not gonna get nothing out of me. There's the church bell pool. The bell pool. What we have here. The lovely memory of Henry Monroe. Of Fort Jubilee Bond Church for January the 10th, 1817, entered into life attorney, May the 18th, 1891, MD in Oxford, FRCP London. The windows are absolutely beautiful. The craftsmanship on and the masonry just some of these are up here a little bit too high but I'll see what I can do three Rowlands Mission, missionary CMS if he was taken by an earthquake in Punjab, India, on April the 4th, 1905, age 35. Wow. Love and memory of Pamela. Eldest daughter of George and Ruth Dudley. He died. Grown in New York, USA on the 16th of December 1934, 
ビール空間クラフトンシップオンネットップラブリーですメタルワークオントップオブウォッドウィアブレッジオブパリシュボンチャーRecorded from 8 to I'm going to get these windows brightly because the sun's out and we can't complain about the sun. But from what we can see, those windows are beautiful. I can see them perfectly clear. They are absolutely stunning. Beautiful pulpit there. And the arches are just. In love and memory of Admiral of the Fleet, Earl Jellico, GCB OM, GCVO, born the 5th of December 1859 and died the 20th of November 1935. Commander, the Grand Fleet at Jutland, 31st of May 1916. Governor General of New Zealand from 1920 to 24. Another memory of Elaine M. Swell. Now, this plaque is、um, family members of Henry Swell, and he was, in fact, the first Prime Minister of New Zealand.、Uh, one of them is his sister, Elizabeth Missing Swell. Elizabeth Swell and Emma F. Swell. New service books were given to the church. Beautiful drawing. To the glory of God and love and memory of Henry Mitchell, JP, of Undermount in this parish, born 19th May 1843, on 29th of December 1908. Erected by his wife and only son. There's the organ and the pipes. Beautiful. This pulpit is dedicated to the memory of the men of Bonchurch who died in the Great War 1914 to 1919. That's lovely. Love and memory of Elizabeth 
um, swell who worshipped in this church for over 50 years. This stall is given by friends and pupils in gratitude of her life and teaching. Those windows are absolutely Raising pipes, the sun coming through. What this is. This is all hand painted. Wow, that's lovely. Another one here. George Henry Russell, who died of wounds at Boulogne, May the 1st, 1918, in his 37th year. He was a member of the choir of this church for 26 years. Right, let's uh, let's go visit outside, shall we? Let's turn the lights off. There you go, Jim. Where do we start in this beautiful place? Another memory of Joseph Wellsford, born February 7th, 1812, died at Winterbourne in the parish, November 14th, 1885. And his wife, 
Any elder? Not here, looks like it's the day family. It's come back from 1833, 1933, down to 45, 25, 90, 90, 2001. Big Holly Bush. That's that. Another one. Working shoes for James. 71. He died, but. It's James. It's just been there all the time. Jane Morrison, widow of Smith Stobart, Esquire, born the 4th of June 1791, died December the 20th, 1878. Here we go, loving memory of Jonathan Jolliffe, passed peacefully away January 1897, age 79. Francis, his wife, 67th year, 1911. And then, some more Jolliffs. Another memory of Alice Francis, youngest daughter of the late Jonathan and Francis Jolliffe, who died 26th of July 1934, age 69. And also Rosa Jane, sister of the above, who died 12th of May 1944, age 83. Another memory of Jonathan George Jolliffe, born in Bond Church, died July the 24th, 1931, age 88, and his wife Catherine Royale, well, died April the 24th, 1935, age 79. A little bit of the white cross there. I'm not going to apologise if the sun's ruining the shop because we should be grateful we've actually got some sunshine. So, I mean, look at this. Something's been eating the fungi off of it, but the moss is lovely. Something's been pecking at the moss, obviously, as well. Who have we got here? Elias and Maria, daughter of John and Sarah Gray. Part of July 12th of September 1886. There's a plaque there, but it looks like that's been moved. Put that straight. See if we can get in. I'm going to catch that, but hopefully we'll be able to catch it on the camera. 
I'm uh, oh. this is no stone there. It's lovely to see a plaque being put for her. Have a, see if we can. Loving Memorial Rebecca, daughter of William Hatterdon of Bracken Hill, Bradford, who died in Bottom Church, March the 26th, 1871, aged 20 years. Another one of those beautiful crosses. They spring up everywhere, I do love them. These are some more of the, the Swinburne family. This is Charles Henry Swinburne, Admiral. Admiral Charles Henry Swinburne. He was the father of the poet Algernon Charles Swinburne. He was the son of St John Edward Swinburne, sixth baronet. He married Lady Jane Henry Eyre Ashburn, daughter of George Ashburn, the third Earl of Ashburn and Charlotte Percy. And Edith Swinburne. I know I've got more information on these, so... Uh, I'll be putting them up on a bit of a talk over. Jane Henrietta Swinburne. Lady Jane Henrietta Swinburne. She was the mother of the poet Algernon Charles Swinburne. All these uniform crosses, oh, I think they must be the same family by the looks of it. It's Susan Harriet Field. George Robert Field. Randall William Field. Fanny Caroline Field. Or Field in, Field in, sorry. It's filled and not filled. And there's some more, but what I'm walking on is your average path. It's all covered by the leaves. And if you look at the footer of each of the graves, and then we've got Lieutenant General Sir Robert Abnot. KCB and KTS, born 19th, November the 19th, 1773, and died May the 6th, 1853. We actually see a plaque for him while we were inside the church, actually. Thank you for your service, sir. And then we've got more of the Fieldens, Henry, uh, Randall Henry Fielden. Sarah Jane during 15 years. Oh, she was a servant to the family. And that one was a servant to the family. And a friend to the family. Wow. They must have been a, a, a reputable family. I will check out and see if I can find something. Look at the top of this. Craftsmanship that's gone into that. Some of these you can't see the writing, but I can get information, so I'll be putting that up as we go along. Uh, 
Percy Pritchard. Jane, the wife of Arthur and Way. Died 21st of December 1877 in her 87th year. And there's Arthur next door. Luckham Farm. July 22nd, 1850. 75. This is such a beautiful place. I've come a bit earlier than I wanted to actually. I thought it was going to be crocus season, but they're not out yet. Not here anyway. Other places they are. But we still have a carpet of other flowers. What have we got? We've got a, a short Clara Eleanor Hood, wife of Reverend Atherston, oh, good, born 24th of November 1856 and died the 6th of June 1932. These are at work now. Charles Edward Squall. The son of actor Lancelot Squall, who used the name Ronald Squall, and his actress mother, who used the stage name of Muriel Martin Harvey, and is also the grandson of actor Sir John Martin Harvey and Lady Martin Harvey, who used the name Miss Ender Silva. In 1936, he was staying with a Congregational minister and his wife at their home, Ashmount, Alpine Road in Ventnor on the Isle of Wight. He was found naked, crouched over the bath with his head and trunk under the water. He was taken out of the bath and artificial respiration was administered, but to no avail. The coroner returned a verdict of accidental death while in a fainting fit. In the Evening Telegraph, Thursday the 23rd of July 1936. Son and brother die. Mr Ronald Squire, the actor, had been bereaved twice during the last few days. While at the bedside of his brother at Westcott, which is the village I grew up in, in Dorking, he heard that his 17-year-old son had died in a bath at Ventnor on the Isle of Wight where he was staying with friends. Yesterday, his brother died. At the inquest at Ventnor today, Mr Squire's son Charles Edward, a verdict that he died through being accidentally drowned in a bath while in a fainting fit, was recorded by the Deputy Coroner for the, late, for the Isle of Wight, Mr Francis Joyce. Mr Squire gave evidence that his son had suffered from fainting fits at intervals for six years. About two months ago he had a bad accident and fainted when getting into a bath. His feet were badly scalded. The boy's mother, Miss Muriel Gordon, Miss Muriel Martin Harvey, the actress, said that the boy went to the Isle of Wight in June for a summer and this early month it was arranged for him to stay with the Reverend S.H. Marshall at his home in Ventnor. Mr. Marshall, a Congressional Minister, said that the boy had been in good health during his visit. On Tuesday, when he appeared to be longer in the bathroom than usual, he witnessed a knock at the door. Receiving no reply, by hearing water running, he opened the door and found the boy crouched over the side of the bath with his head resting at the bottom of the bath, which was nearly full of water. The boy's legs were outside the bath, but the whole of his trunk was submerged. Mr Marshall said that he immediately lifted the boy from the bath, applied artificial respiration and sent for a doctor, 
who continued the artificial respiration until it was realised that it was hopeless. Jacqueline Mary Squire Actress using the stage name of Jacqueline Squire born Mary Jacqueline Rosalia Squire she was a daughter of Ronald Lancelot Squire who used the stage name Ronald Squire and Margaret Muriel de Malfont Martin Harvey who used the stage name of Muriel Martin Harvey granddaughter of the actor Sir John Martin Harvey and Lady Martin Harvey who used the stage name Miss N. De Silva. It was Lady Martin Harvey's purchase of Seaside Cottage on Bonchurch Shore that brought about the family's connection to the area. Jacqueline moved to the USA and had a small uncredited part in the film My Fair Lady in 1964. She lived by Carmel by the Sea, California, with her partner, Kathleen Deirdre Feroda Harris, but died in London. Her ashes were buried in the grave of her brother, Charles, who died in 1936. Right. Sacred to the memory of Elizabeth Bay. Departed life in October 12, 1860, age 76. In the picture, her husband, Joseph. It looked like 1874, Joseph passed, January. 83 years old. Two there. Can't read them. Right. Elizabeth Horlock, born September twenty sixth, eighteen twenty three and died 2nd of June 1908 and Ellen Horlock, sister of the above born March 16th 1845 and died April the 3rd 1929 and then we've got Henry Horlock born October 29th 1831 died March 23rd 1902 also James Horlock Born 28th of February 1843 and died the 8th of September 1915. And Kate Richardson, Lee Hall, Horlock, mother of Sylvia Russell, died 27th 1959, February 75. Loving memory of Frederick C. Yarrow, a beloved husband and father, who died 26th of November 1931, age 72. And Mary J. Yarrow, died December the 17th, 1959, aged 100 years and six months. Wow. Devoted wife and mother. Also, Frederick. C. Yarrow, beloved husband of Mabel and dear father of Norman, died the 23rd of March 1953. And also Mabel, his mother, and in her later years, the beloved wife of Albert Spencer, died June the 8th, 1974, age 75. And then we've got Albert Edward Spencer, CBE, FRI. CS, December the 3rd, 1977, 
Now look at that wonderful piece craftsmanship. See if we can use Emily Fisher Brown. Passed away March the 30th, 1942, I think. But look at that. Absolutely lovely. This is George Clunis Ross of the Keeling Cocoa Islands, born 20th of June 1842, and died 7th of July 1910. Then from this place. His body was removed on the February 12, 1915 and reinterned in the family vault on the new Salima Islands of the Keeling Cocos Group on July the 2nd, 1915. Wow. See if we can find something on that one. It's a beautiful bell. It's a big bell as well. You can see part of the cliff nice there. You know what we can? Hubert Carvey Giles, Commander of Royal Navy, December the twenty first, eighteen fifty to March the third, nineteen forty. Well done. Also, beloved and only daughter, Flora Berta Giles. This must be the Giles plot here. It's Gracie and Amy. But I did find an impression when I last came here. It was like hay bent fences. And they're all in the cliff tops. Little Christmas ornament there. It's like it was a door of some sort, the way it's all. Mm. It's been blocked up. There's an eight there with a graffiti.
graffiti by others, but we don't do that. Look at the zigzags around the windows. Oh, that looks like there's a wasp nest there as well. Just forming itself. Now I know there's more information on this. Eighteen sixty four. So there is information, and I'm just oh, I should just do a talk over a bit on that. This, in fact, is the Lisa Mausoleum, an Egyptianite mausoleum with a pyramidal roof. As originally designed, the whole of the entrance front would have been visible, despite the fact that the rear was built into a hillside behind. Now, however, even on the front, elevation is partially submerged. The mausoleum was built by Henry Beaumont Leeson, MD, 1803 to 1872, following the death of his son, Henry Sutton Leeson, at the age of 28 in 1864. Dr. Leeson was a patron of the living at Bonchurch. He and his wife Elizabeth, who died 1867, are the only other people buried in the mausoleum. Inscriptions to the doorway inscribed with the following initials and dates. GL 1867, HSL 1872 and EL 1867. Uh, I have seen some stones, but an actual door. Wow. Very impressed. And next to it we have 160670 Private HN Cotton Machine Gun Corps Infantry, 4th of March 1919, age 19. Thank you for your service, sir. Next door, not sure if we're getting this because of the light. We've got Joseph Thomas Saunders, died March the 16th, 1911, age 44. Edward Conwood Bonsfield, died 19th of November. 1895, age 17, also Louisa, wife of the above, died 12th of October 1917, age 78. Loving memory of Richard Bolton, died February the 20th, 1930, age 72. Joanna Bolton died 23rd of July 1940, 
also their daughter, Annie I.S. Bolton, died October the 17th, 1977. Henry Charles Diamond died November, no, December the 9th, 1912, age 97. The bottom. Jane Holbrook departed life August the 1st, 1912, age 69, and also Henry Sorter Holbrook, husband, who died January the 5th, 1934. Uh. Here we have the beloved memory of John Edward Price, Sergeant Navigation, Navigator RAF, husband of Margaret, killed flying on active service, 10th of February 1943, age 33. Thank you for your service, sir. The next door. In good company, they both are. Loved memory of Robert Graham Morris, first officer, ATA. Died serving his country January the 3rd, 1945, age 34. Now, if I'm correct, the ATA, in fact, it's a women's corps which were transporting aircraft to um, bases and squadrons. But they flew without guns, without radio, uh, radios, and without any navigation apart from pencil and a map. And they had to go by landmarks. So thank you both for your service. And here now we have the um, the Swinburnes along with the poet Algerino Charles Swinburne. Algernon Charles Swinburne, a British poet born in Chester Street near Grosvenor Place in London, the eldest child of Admiral Charles Henry Swinburne, 1797 to 1877. His wife, Lady Jane Henrietta Ashburnham. Swinburne was such a sickly child that he was not expected to live for more than an hour. Although he did survive, he was always nervous and slight. But though he had no interest in organised games, he excelled in climbing and swimming. His parents were high church and he brought up in a quasi-Catholic on the island and on the estate of his grandfather, the Earl of Ashburnham, in Northumberland. Until he reached the age of 12, he was not allowed to read a novel. But in that year, he was sent to Eton, where he became a, a, a massive reader. Although he was asked to leave the school on the grounds that he had become unresponsive to discipline. He went to study at Balliol College, Oxford, where he became an atheist and a republican. However, after his landlady complained of his late hours, and he left in November 1859 without taking a degree and moved to London, where he became an associate of Rossetti and Burn Jones. His drinking, which had always been heavily, increased during this period, and he developed epilepsy. In the summer of 1863, after a fall at the studio of J. McNeil Whistler, he was nursed back to health by his artist mother. At about this time, he was said to have had an affair with Ada Isaac Menken, who appears in his writings under the name of Dolores. His first major work, Atlanta in Croydon, appeared in 1865 and was followed by next year by Poems and Ballads, a later volume, Songs Before Sunrise, in 1871. 
reflects his friendship with an Italian revolutionary, Giuseppe Manzini. And in 1870s, however, his alcoholism became far worse. He did, as did his deafness, his tendency towards masculinism. In September 1879, his friend, the writer Theodore Watt Dunton, rescued him from a life of increasing degeneration and invited him to share his house, The Pines, in Putney, South London. Swinburne, three, years, three decades, was spent in comparative health and happiness. In April 1909, the entire Watson Dunn household caught influenza. In Swinburne's case, this developed into pneumonia, which he died on the 10th of April. Five days later, he was buried next to his parents. And here is the War Memorial for the men, the bum shirts that gave their lives. In the Second World War. Thank you all for your services. Right, so that is it for another episode of Cemetery Stroll. So I hope you enjoyed it. The sun is out. We're getting better weather. We'll be able to get out more, discover more. So don't forget to, to like, subscribe, subscribing is for free, don't forget. And we all like a freebie. And leave a comment. So from St Boniface Church, St Bon Church on the Isle of Wight, I say thank you much, Lee. Goodbye. Thank mm -hmm. you.